guys, how many times have you heard that PvP is unrelenting, it's unforgiving, it's impossible to play? Well, you know what? You guys are absolutely correct. And there's no way for you to actually learn PvP without jumping right into Cyrodiil or BGs. And guys, how many times have you come across elitists like me who just completely F on you and give no Fs, right? It's very sour tasting. It's not fun at all. There's no way for you to learn PvP until today. So what we're going to start doing are combat analysis or educational commentaries to kind of teach you guys the ins and the outs, the mind frame of a top tier PvP player as myself. Not stroking my ego, but I'm just saying I know a thing or two about a thing or two. So we're going to start doing these series and let you guys pick my brain about how I'm doing the 1vx is what I'm constantly thinking of in these these fights and just how to overall better improve your gameplay so you're not as hesitant to jump into PvP. It actually can be fun. You just have to know your way around the battlefield, which is hopefully what I'm able to do in these series. Let's get into it. Okay, welcome back guys. So as to any educational commentary combat analysis, it's very important to know what sets we're running, right? So right now we're running Burning Spell Weave, Iron Blood, Engine Guardian, Malakanth, and One Piece Trainee. The reason this is important is because it dictates the play style of your character, okay? So by running Iron Blood, let me just go ahead and explain. Iron Blood means your mobility is going to be pretty bad. So the whole point of this build is what I call the turn and burn method. We'll just go ahead and let this play out here. There's going to be a lot of me stopping and all that. If it annoys you guys, let me know, okay? So the reason it's called turn and burn is that the whole point of Iron Blood is to bait people in. You want people to come to you. As a DK, you have very limited mobility unless you're spamming chains, which is really expensive, or you have access to a Sigic Order skill line, which is kind of hard to slot sometimes because you need a lot of the buffs and debuffs uh, that you see here on the DK kit. Now, with all that in mind, we'll go ahead and let this play out a little bit. So, starting off right now, I'm just buffing, debuffing. I'm not too much worried about damage. Right here, this is a healer. I always get in the habit of anytime there is a healer, guys, tab target them. It, it gives you wall hacks, literally gives you wall hacks. You can see them through whatever terrain that there is. You can wind up a heavy attack as they're kind of coming around a corner to get some additional burst off really quickly. It's a very handy tool to get into, you know, on PC, obviously it's tab by default and on console, it's R3, right? You just click your stick in. So that that's the beauty of it, okay? So right now, this really is a 1vx it's me in, in this buddy. Pops a rest of ulti. We're just kind of chasing this guy down. But again, I just want to explain the importance of tab targeting. Right there was a very special play. I waited to fossilize him. Why did I wait to fossilize him? I knew he was going to jump off the edge. If I fossilize him while he's in the air, he cannot break free until he hits the ground. Okay? So whatever dot damage I have going on this guy... You know, whatever is hitting him, he cannot do anything about it if he CC'd as he's free falling. So that's why I CC'd there and not earlier. So we eventually chase this guy down. Right here, very important. I should have had my cursor, you know, with the with the little highlighty thing. You I'll, I'll do that going forward. But right here is super important. Always get the question of when do you block, when do you roll dodge? This is a prime example of of when you roll dodge. If you're getting overload spam, you do not want to eat these. These are not good. These are not chicken nuggies. The, the, these, this shit hurts. This is salad, right? This this is salad of radishes coming at your face. It's terrible, okay? Notice on my debuff bar down here, guys. This is why I have some debuffs turned on. So I have Curse on me. I have Endless Fury. If one of these overloads hits, hits me and it crits for like 8 or 9k, I'm probably going to pop and die with vicious curse and also endless fury so it's very very important that you roll dodge these i got really lucky in that first one did not crit i did not react in time so you can see here on my bar i actually have a a buff timer for iron blood right here in the center so the beauties of running iron blood is that when at procs you can go super offensive you can risk it for the biscuit so to speak so that's why I'm always praising the set, even for newer players. Like th this is kind of like a newer, you know, player set. I use it. It's probably my favorite set in the entire game. Okay, guys, it is phenomenal. The turnaround potential you can get from this. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to kite. We eat an in cap. I think somehow our dodge roll still carried over. We dodge the in cap. Thank God, because look behind us. We're about to get zerg down quite a bit. Right here, I should be roll dodging. If I don't roll dodge, this is a terrible misplay on my part. 
Okay, I did roll dodge break free. So whenever you get fossilized like that, guys, get in the habit of break free roll dodge. That's probably the most invaluable mechanic in the game. Do not break free and just hold block. Break free roll dodge every single time, assuming that your stamina pool allows it. So right now, it's all about the kite game, getting into cover and line of sighting because you saw all the people behind me. Engine guarding, coming in clutch, giving me a health proc. So this is what you want though, right guys? So with with Iron Blood, it baits people into like a false sense of security, right? If people see you're super tanky, they don't assume you're going to be putting out damage. Okay? So that's the beauty of it. People get over aggressive, they get overconfident, and they just want to jump you when they're around the comforts of the reserve. Okay? So Iron Blood is now off. We have to be really careful about our resource management here. Notice our potions just coming off cooldown. I should probably swap this to a tripod just to get the extra resources but right now we need to be really careful considering we have play break and a few debuffs on us luckily the entire zerg did not chase us so i tossed out a cc there just to create space pressure don't be afraid to toss out ccs at literally any time okay so right now i'm just trying to play the kite game i see this guy has a very low health pool just this is something you need to get in the habit of you need to pick your fights when you can i notice he has a very small health pool he's not very high cp you know no offense to you guys but my assumption is that i can kill him here now right now instead of waiting him to join him back up with his zerg and him he could be putting out incredible damage who knows but i feel confident that i can burst this guy pretty quickly before i go upstairs notice he's blocking he actually blocks sleep that's really good he's shooting up burning spell weave it was up a lot of dot damage going on in the guy if you do not have you know if you're not skilled a magic sorcerer he should have been streaking there which is why i picked him off at the beginning because i knew he was the weakest link so it's very important to thin the herd when you can especially on the mag dk you don't have many opportunities like that so right there i applied burning embers i'll go back a little bit if you're playing mag dk whenever you get the chance to apply burning embers please do so now if this effect gets cleansed, you get healed. If the opponent dies, you get healed. If it expires, you get healed. So I have as many of these Burning Ember procs up as feasibly possible. Okay. Getting in cap there. What do I do? I break free roll dodge every single time. Guys, get in the habit of doing this. If a Nightblade's going to hit you with the in cap, you best bet that there's going to be a Spectral Bow hit you right in the schnoz if you do not roll dodge. It's such a good habit to get into. Going upstairs, just trying to get everything to proc. Iron Blood procs. We eat another in cap there. So you guys know that kind of reduces your healing and such. But we have Iron Blood up, so I feel confident on you know, going all the, on the offensive right here. So very first thing I do, you fossilize. On the DK, you want to fossilize. The very next ability you need to use is Burning Embers. Because Burning Embers can be roll dodge pretty easily, right? So you need to get this up. The reason you want to fossilize burning embers is so that even if they do roll dodge odds are you're going to hit them with the burning embers before they can roll dodge next you want to hit them with engulfing flames the reason i did not do it in this order because i already noticed on his debuff bar he was already afflicted by burning embers so that's why i opted for engulfing flames here so it's very important for you to keep track of your buff and debuff management okay so Engine Guardian proc, that's pretty good. Uh, this guy's alone, he's a Nightblade. So what we're gonna do, we're just kinda go upstairs. This is what I like to do right here. So I like to go upstairs because there's only one point of entry here on the keeps. They can only come from one spot. No one can hit you up here unless they're actually up here or you're standing on the very edge, uh, like somewhere over here on this little ledge. No one can hit you from the keep. My magic it is low, even though this Nightblade that's on me isn't as skilled, right? I still feel like I need to get my resources back. Also coming up here, there's a mage guard. So fossilize the very first thing. I go to get resources back. Mage guard's helping me out a little bit. I reapply embers, go for the leap. He does a nice cloak there. So we'll go back here. This is what I like to do. So if you're running talons, talons is such an amazing skill, especially next patch. So this roots them, right? A little trick with the DK, if you talons them, everyone's instinct is to roll dodge immediately afterwards if you can watch for the roll dodge time yourself be patient and wait for them to roll dodge you can fossilize them in the roll dodge and then when they break the cc they're also immobilized allowing you to get power lashes off unless they roll dodge again that's a huge hit to their stamina economy so get in the habit of doing that now whether i actually catch this guy in cc i didn't there but typically that's what you want to do 
So my Iron Blood procs here, I don't care what kind of debuffs are on me, I'm gonna go on the offensive because I'm at full health, right? I have pretty good resources, I can just delete whoever I want. This unfortunate guy did not buff or whatever, I don't know if it's food right now, but you have to seize the opportunity when you can. I see that he's low, stunned, he's dead. Now this guy is all alone, I'm sure he's expended most of his resources. And there you go, guys. So hopefully that was a little enlightening on kind of the ins and outs. I know it wasn't like a huge 1vx, right? You know, like a 1v8, 1v9. I mean, this is something super sim simple to stomach, but also has a lot of small nuances in it that really add up in the long term. So hopefully this is helpful. I'll start doing one of these at least a week for you guys. If you're interested, please like and sub, guys. Uh, leave some comments down in the, uh, the towel section below. And I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.